Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. Today is going to be the full review of my Dan Henry 1945. Now, Dan Henry himself, if you're not aware, is a passionate collector of watches. He has a vast array of vintage watches that look absolutely amazing. And in his own wisdom, which I think is a fantastic idea, has decided to release a range of watches that are heavily inspired on these vintage watches he owns. And I think he's wanted to release watches that are both a good quality watches, but also affordable. And this one is both of those things. He's been able to achieve that by using a quartz movement in most of these watches that he produces. So that does help bring the price down a little bit. And I have to say, even though quartz watches aren't the things that I really desperately chase after when I'm looking for watches, this one is particularly good. In fact, this one's particularly great. In fact, this is the best quartz watch I've ever had on my wrist. And I'm gonna say it right now at the start of this review. It is by far the best quartz watch I've ever owned. And not just that, it's one of the better watches that I've owned recently. It is fantastic. It is absolutely beautiful. It feels good. It looks good. It works well. And I love this vintage inspired type watches. And for 280 US dollars, including shipping to most places in the world, plus shipping to a couple of places in the world, I think it's very, very well priced. Now guys, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I really would appreciate it if you click on that subscribe button. But that's enough of me talking. Let's flip the camera around and do a full review of this Dan Henry 1945. So I've been quite interested in the Dan Henry brand for some time now, and I sort of knew that it was going to be a good quality watch just from all the other reviews and all the information that I'd seen online, but I didn't quite realize how good it was going to be. Firstly, the packaging, fantastic. It comes in this sort of solid tube, and it comes with a watch roll. It's like a green canvas watch roll, which is actually quite nice. It comes with these sort of warranty card information. Um, one year warranty. This one's not filled out, but that's okay. And we've got some information. I think we talked about the uh, the movement inside here because we've got a uh, quartz movement inside this watch. Then obviously we have the watch inside here. And the first thing straight out of the case, it just has a nice little bit of weight to it. One of the things about sort of quartz watches that don't generally appeal to me is that they feel a little bit light. I like having a little bit of extra weight on wrist, and this has that. I think it's because of that awesome sort of uh, 3D case back there. But from a size perspective, because it is based on a sort of an older watch, this is a the 1945 model, so it's based on those sort of World War II uh, pilot watches. They were a bit smaller at the time. This one, Dan, has upscaled it a little bit, making it a little bit more modern. And those dimensions are 40.8 there. And that is actually the case in there. As you can see, the bezel overhangs slightly. So the bezel itself is 41.4. The width of the watch is 13.8 millimeters. The lug to lug is 48.6 millimeters and it has a lug width of 22 millimeters and on this supplied strap it weighs in at 70 grams now there are a couple of different options when buying this one obviously I went for the all black dial without the date but there is also a sort of panda style dial there and also one with a date at the 430 now this one I picked because I quite like the aesthetics of all black especially with the, so much that is going on on that dial and also by removing that date although I lose that functionality it's just one less thing on the dial because as you can see there is quite a lot going on here on this dial and before we even talk about that dial let's talk about what's over the top of it. This is a beautiful piece of double dome sapphire crystal and it is absolutely magnificent it's really impressive look at that. How pretty is that? And I love how it sort of curves up from that bezel and comes up and over. Really nice. But let's look at what's under that sapphire crystal, shall we? Because there's a couple of different textures, a couple of different sort of uh, print styles, a couple of different colors. Let's talk about the dial itself. The majority of the dial there is like a glossy black, which is actually quite nice. And it's offset by these sub registers, which is more of a matte black, which really sort of gives it a bit of a bit of a different look, which is quite cool. Most things on here are printed, not everything, but most things are printed. And it's a mix of about three different colors. We've got like an off white, which you can see around here, obviously the red, and then there's some sort of like bronzy sort of features. Now everything here, as you can see, is printed, except for the actual numerals there itself, the nine, the six, and the three. Um, they are applied, as you can see, so there's a 3D effect there. 
And having so much going on on the dial, I think that's actually quite a good sort of decision to be made. If there was a lot more applied, I think it would start looking a little bit too complicated. We've got those cathedral style hands there, which are very, very cool. Um, I do like this style here. It's just a, has that real sort of vintage feel to it. And obviously being a vintage styled watch, it suits this watch very, very well. At the sub dials, we have the tenth of a second, we have the ticking second hand, and we've got the counter over here. Being a chronograph, obviously we have the chronograph features, the top button starting that second hand. You can see the tenth of the second starts spinning around nice and quick there. We're working our way around, and as we'd expect as we go along, we would start counting up on that other sub register. Being the uh, quartz movement that's inside this, we have that nice smooth sweep back to the 12 o'clock there, which is also very nice to see. Now we do have some nice loom on here. It's the supernova loom, so it has that nice green look to it. The loom is actually quite good as well. I quite like it. It's not only in those hands, but also on those numerals. It does last fairly well. Um, it goes on enough throughout the night that you're going to need it. Perfectly acceptable. I'm quite happy with the amount of loom that there is on this watch. Now, if I didn't mention, this watch is 280 US dollars, and I think that is really well priced. Now, there is free shipping worldwide to most countries. At the moment, I think there's some issues with shipping, so there's a few costs to shipping depending on where you are in the world. But at 280 US dollars, even plus shipping, I think you're getting a lot for your money there. We have a stainless steel bezel. It is a 12 click bi directional, so it clicks one, two, goes back and forth. Really nice feel to it, really solid, absolutely no movement whatsoever. And that means you can track a second time zone effectively with it as well, which is quite nice. It's a good feature to have. You can also see that obviously those numbers are paint filled and we've got the upside down triangle at the 12 there in red. The case itself is all brushed and it's very nicely brushed. Have a look at that. Hopefully you can see that properly on the cameras here. Lovely brushing. You can see a slight downturn with the case there with the lugs. It doesn't affect the actual wearing of the, of the watch much. It doesn't sort of conform around the wrist as much as you would probably like to see sometimes, but it absolutely looks good. Very, very nice. We've got the DH on the crown there. Obviously the two pushes. Now it's not a screw down crown. It's just a, uh, a push pull crown. Being a quartz though, you're not really going to ever be modifying or changing that very often. Once you've set, you can sort of forget about it. And one of my favourite absolute features of this is that solid stainless steel 3D case back. Check out that plane. Look how much of a 3D effect there is there. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Can you see that? Wow, that's really, really cool. Really like it. Suits the watch. Love a nice case back anyway. And also really helps to add to that sort of nice feel in hand, that sort of weight to the watch. We've got some printing around the outside. It says 1945, World War II, Sapphire Crystal, 50 meters of water resistance. So not a huge amount, but more than enough of this sort of style of watch. Stainless steel. And there we go, Dan Henry. The strap itself is printed with Dan Henry, it tells you that's a 22 millimeter. Now it doesn't say what type of material that it is. It doesn't smell like leather. It doesn't, it sort of, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what it's made out of, but I have to say it looks very good on the watch. It sort of suits the style of the watch. It has that sort of Flieger style, sort of pilot drop down sort of step feature onto the strap there. Um, the materials used for the uh, hardware are very, very good, stainless steel, but it's probably not the best feeling strap I've ever had. And even after wearing it a fair bit, there is a bit of squeak there. I'm sure that would go away with more use. But to be honest, I've been wearing it on a different strap. I found another one in my collection that I think suits it really well, and I'll show you that a little bit later on. Now, I'll be mentioning that quartz movement inside, and the quartz movement that is used inside this is the Miyota 6S20. It is a quartz chronograph. It's quite a well-known quartz chronograph, and it is a really good movement to have inside. If you're gonna have a quartz chronograph, this is one of the, the better sort of affordable ones you can have. Very happy with it. It's been keeping good time, as you'd expect with a quartz watch, but it also works very well and it has that nice sweep of the second hand as I showed you earlier. And how does it look on wrist? Well, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It fits very, very well on my six and three quarter inch wrist. And when you look down the wrist, you'll see, as I mentioned earlier, it sits above a little bit. It doesn't sit right on the wrist. It doesn't curve down, sort of touching the wrist. But when you're looking down, yeah, absolutely looks fantastic. As I mentioned, the strap, I think actually looks quite good. It certainly suits it, but it hasn't been the quality that I was hoping. And to be honest, when I talk about sort of straps, Straps. I am, especially when I'm talking about leather, I need a specific type of leather strap to be completely happy. So nothing too much against this one. It's just I have another one in my collection that I think feels better quality and I think it suits the watch as well. So let me show you that one. 
So this is the strap off my Hamilton uh, Jazzmaster. And admittedly, this is off a much more expensive watch. This is off an almost $2,000 watch, but check that out. Wow, that really lifts this watch well beyond what I expected that it would. It now looks absolutely fantastic. Don't get me wrong, these are good. They've also got a quick release spring bars, which makes it really good to change out to this other strap. But I just think it looks absolutely fantastic on this. I like the color combination too, but I also just like the, the quality of this particular strap. So it really lifts it for you. And the best thing about having a strap like this or this, you can swap them out, try different things and see what you enjoy best about the watch. But what do I like about this watch? What don't I like about it? And what would I change? Firstly, I love the weight of this watch and I've mentioned that already, but having that solid case back really it gives that real sort of substantial feel in, in hand, completely different to other quartz watches that are owned. And the quality absolutely shines through with this. The fit, the finish, the brushing on the case, the quality of that stainless steel case back, that, that solid case back, really good. And generally the looks are fantastic. I love these style of hands. I think it's a beautiful sort of vintage inspired watch. I really like vintage watches. So to have a watch that looks like a vintage watch, that wears better than a vintage watch, that performs better than a vintage watch, that is made better than a vintage watch, well, you get a really good watch for that and at a good price as well. So Dan Henry, well done, you've made a wonderful watch. What don't I like about it? Well, as mentioned, the strap, probably not my favorite, but that's an easy thing to swap out just as I have. Also, I can absolutely understand that some people are gonna think this dial is probably a little bit too busy. There is a lot going on here, but that is the style of the watch. So you either like it or dislike it, or you know, maybe somewhere in between, I don't know. But I particularly like it, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. But because it is so busy, sometimes it is a little bit harder to read. I certainly can read it quite easily, but it does sometimes take that extra second. It's not a quick look, quick check of the time. It's look, oh, yep, yep, that's the time, absolutely. It's only because there is a lot going on on this dial. And what would I change? Well, realistically, just the strap, which I've done so on this one. So not too much to complain about. All right, guys, so let's flip the camera around. Let me give you some of my final thoughts of this Dan Henry 1945. So as you can probably tell, I really like this watch. I like this more than I expected to like it. And I expected to like it a lot. I had seen quite a few reviews of this watch. I looked at these watches a lot and I expected it to be good, but it's actually great. There's only a couple of things I really would change about it. Firstly, as I said, that strap, but that's okay. I've swapped that out with one of my straps. No biggie at all. Secondly, the only thing that could make this watch better is to put an automatic movement in it. The problem with that would be is that it would make the price so much more that it just wouldn't make sense as much as it is now in this quartz version. So I'm not even sure if I would actually do that if I could make that change. I think it's pretty much perfect. It's a great watch, which you can flick on your own strap that you particularly like. Fantastic. All right, easy as that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I do hope to see you in the next video.